everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to share with you my top five best-selling flowers for my 2021 season. Now, I know what you're thinking, only five? Well, these are the top five and I'll give you a few little bonuses. So here we go. Okay, number one on the list were sunflowers. Everybody loves them, you can't get enough of them. All of my customers by far bought sunflowers. Then they would buy other things to go with them, but everybody just loves sunflowers. And sunflowers are really, really easy to grow, especially if you are a beginning flower farmer or just um, a gardener that when you want to add flowers to your own landscape, you can't go wrong with sunflowers. They are tender annuals, so I usually will start seeding my sunflowers about six weeks before my last frost. Now my last frost here in Florida is around March the 15th, so count six to eight weeks back from that. In February, I will start um, seed blocking my sunflowers. I'll let them sit under the grow lights for a couple of weeks, harden them off, and then out in the field they'll go. Now I usually will have a uh, cold snap right around Easter, so I might have to cover them with some frost cover, but more than likely they'll be okay because they're, they're pretty hardy. But sunflowers, I sold so many sunflowers. And I also succession plant my sunflowers. That means I'll plant um, several hundred out, I'll wait two weeks, I'll plant several hundred more. So that way you're always, uh, continually having flowers to cut because the sunflowers I grow are pro cut so they're like one and done they're not branching they're just one single sunflower that you cut and then the stem comes out you yank it out and then you replace it so number two on the list was snapdragons my customers love snapdragons almost as much as sunflowers every Saturday when I'd have my market days and I'd have the flower bar set up the snapdragons were probably one of the first things that would sell out because they're the perfect line flower to give the height to your bouquet and just that little bit of romance. They're frilly, they're just feminine, and the colors are amazing and so vivid. And so snapdragons really, really sold well. They're uh, super easy to grow. I am in zone B, so I'm in North Florida, and we have super hot summer. So I grew the Rocket Series last year. And I think the season before that, I tried the Potomac and they did uh, really good too, but they did not last as long as the Rocket Series in the heat. I probably had blooms on my Snapdragons up until July and maybe even a little after July. I do know that I was able to include the red rockets in my 4th of July bouquets with the yellow sunflowers. And then I had some blue um, bachelor buttons and they were just like the perfect 4th of July bouquet. So I would uh, highly encourage you if you are in a hot, warm climate, try the Rocket Series. Now I will say this, in the spring that was probably their glory season. They were taller, larger stalks, and you know probably produced more flowers, but they hung in there throughout you know the, the heat of the summer. So I will definitely be growing Rocket Series Snapdragons again. Third on the list, Lysianthus. They are my personal favorite. Um, my customers love them as well. My floral customers, florist customers love them as well. But you know, just me personally, I love Lysianthus. And I know I say that about every flower, but Lysianthus probably number one on my list with Dahlia is second. But the customers love Lysianthus as well. They last so long in the vase, it's crazy. I could cut a Lysianthus on a Monday and the following Monday in the cooler, they would still look just as fresh as they did uh, you know, the week before that. And even two weeks in, I would still have fresh looking Lysi Lysianthus. Lysianthus, super hardy, super easy to grow. I winterize them, meaning that I can plant them in the fall. And in the spring, they'll give me er very, very early spring blooms. Plus I'll get a second flush in August. So Lysianthus are a must on the farm. I grew a ton of, um, the beautiful purple and white Picotty. I grew um, the rose colored white, creamy white, yellow, champagne. I mean, I had uh, several, several colors to choose from and I had about 600 Lysianthus. Now I order my Lysianthus plugs in. If you've ever tried to grow Lysianthus from seed, you'll turn gray. Okay, you'll turn gray waiting on them. They take forever 
to germinate and forever to grow large enough to even transplant into the field. Now I am trying seeds again this year and I do have some right now in the grow room that are probably on week eight and you can barely even see they're so tiny, tiny, tiny. But I'm gonna hang in there and give them a try but I'm also ordering seed plugs. And I'm gonna make another video about how to order seed plugs if you've never done that. I order from a plant broker named Farmer Bailey, and you can order them by the week. So whatever week you want to have them delivered, they'll start, they'll begin growing those just for you, and then they'll come in little plug trays, and all you have to do is just harden them off and stick them out in the field and they're ready to go. But Lysianthus, very much a staple on the farm. Number four, dahlias. Everybody loves a good dahlia, right? They all remind you of your grandmother that grew them or an aunt that grew them, but they're such an old fashioned, just beautiful, beautiful flower. And they are workhorses. They will continue to bloom all summer long, right up until my last frost around Thanksgiving. So I always have plenty of dahlias. I think I grew like 300 uh, dahlias last year. This year, I'm probably going to up that a little bit because you just can't ever get enough of them. And they are like the beautiful focal flower in your market bouquet. So, you know, gotta have, gotta have the dahlias. Now, dahlias don't like uh, cold, cold weather, so they can't take frost. So if you start your dahlias early, you have to cover them or, or bring them into the greenhouse. They also can't take extreme heat. As I mentioned before, here in zone 8B in Florida, we get those extreme hot, extremely hot summers. So what I did last year of the dahlia patch is I put shade cloth and that gave them just enough shade that they didn't wilt, overly wilt in the afternoons. And they will drink a lot of water. So I had to water them twice a day during the heat of the summer. So like through those hot July, August months, I was watering twice a day and I kept them under 30% shade cloth. And they're beautiful and they come in so many different colors and styles ball dahlias and you know just pom-poms and then the huge dinner plates now i will say this dinner plate dahlias are gorgeous to look at but they're very hard to work with in a bouquet because they're huge so if you have a, a dinner plate dahlia in a bouquet you don't need a whole lot else to go with it just maybe some filler but anyway you got to grow dahlias if you've never tried them they're wonderful and then number five on the list, zinnias. Zinnias, what can I say? They're the easiest flower to grow. I mean, especially in our warm climate, zinnias just thrive. There again, they're a tender annual, so they can't take frost. So I wait, you know, until all the frost has passed, then I get the zinnias in the field. Now I will start seed starting uh, zinnias in soil blocks just to get a jump on the season. That way when our last frost has passed, I can get them in the field and we'll have zinnias like very, very early in the season. Now zinnias, the, the varieties that I like to grow are the Benares Giants because you know, they're just big and they're double flowered. I also um, do like the small Oklahomas just to, to add some little filler in. And then uh, of course, I mean, there's just so many. You've got California Giants. I mean, you've got the Dahlia Flat. There's just so many different varieties, but basically what appeals to you and to your customer. It, and also the time of year. In the spring, I like to go with a little bit more pastel look. And then as the summer and the fall come along, we start uh, converting over succession planting into like the reds and the yellows and the oranges and the more uh, fall colors. And they pair beautifully with your sunflowers. So. Zinnias are a must. They're heat tolerant. I go through hurricanes. I do have to end up staking my dahlias though because of the wind and like I mentioned here, hurricanes. So, you know, we get a few storms a year. We'll have the, the harsh winds come, you know, the hard winds come through. So I always um, net my zinnias to keep them upright. And I also net my dahlias, by the way. I didn't mention that before, just because of the wind. A lot of people try staking. I actually tried staking with the uh, crisscross Florida, Florida weave crisscross twine last year and I lost a lot of tops from wind that broke off so I'm going back to the netting this year it's a little bit of a pain just when you go to cut them down and harvest to work through the netting but I do two layers of netting on my dahlias and two layers of netting on my zinnias just to keep them upright and beautiful but zinnias are a workhorse as well super easy to grow if you are a first-time flower farmer you can't go wrong with zinnias zinnias and sunflowers are a must for you to try. So 
zinnias are number five. Now, as I promised, there are some bonuses <laughs> because too many to mention, you know, they're all, all the ones that I mentioned, the top five, all of my customers love them. They make up the most beautiful bouquets. But then we also had, let me look on my list, Gumfrina. I grew the little, so some people call them ball amaranth. I grew the little purple, white, and pink mix. And let me tell you, the purple ones, everybody loved them. I could not get enough of those little purple balls stuck in, in their bouquets, as well as Celosia. I had purple Celosia and purple Gumfrina, and they just added so much um, color and fun, whimsical feeling to the bouquets. And then um, I grew uh, white Gumfrina and white Celosia as well. So those two are great, great fillers. Um, then also lemon basil. Oh my gosh, if you've never grown Mrs. Burns lemon basil, you have to grow that as a filler. It smells amazing. It's like fresh lemonade on a summer day is how I, how the only way I can explain it. But all the customers love the lemon basil filler in their bouquets as well. It's fragrant, it lasts forever, as long as you harvest it early, early in the mornings so it doesn't wilt. But lemon basil is another great filler to go with the Celosia and the Gumfrina. And lastly, I'll mention, and then I'll stop here because I could just go on and on and name every flower in the garden because I love them all, but chocolate Queen Anne's lace or false Queen Anne's. It's just, and what can I say? It's another great little filler, just a great little uh, amount of interest in the bouquet and a customer favorite as well. So I hope that this video uh, gave you a little bit of insight if you're wondering what to grow this season or maybe if you're a new flower farmer and you're wondering what your customers will like. I say go for it. Try whatever you like, whatever appeals to you, and then just see how your customers react to it as well. I'm telling you right now, I don't grow a flower that I don't like. I don't grow a flower that I don't think is beautiful. There are some flowers that some people just love so much, but I just don't care for them, so I don't bother. And that's okay. Everybody has their preference and everybody, you know, can be different. So do what feels right for you and love what you do and your customers will love it too. So thanks for watching, guys, and remember, bloom where you're planted.